All right, so this next video is going to be um, explaining how to customize the data importer so that you can create your own custom field types. Uh, I'm also going to throw in a custom property, which is specific to Sitecore, the Sitecore mapping, um, just to show you how to do it and give you more uh, visibility into how this works. So the property I'm going to create, uh, just as an example, I'm going to use the language So the the properties that we're already using are path to text, and all we're doing is we're getting the uh, the value from Sitecore the the existing item. Uh, it's not getting a field value; we're getting a property value. So in this case, we're getting a URL. In the path uh, property, we're getting the, the full path. Uh, to customize this, we're we're just going to get the language now. Um, you want to be extending the base mapping class and also implementing the iBase property. So the base mapping class gets you the fields from Sitecore, um, the handler class, basically the handler assembly, and the to what field. This is all you pretty much have to do is create the constructor for it, for your, your class. Everything else gets handled by the parent. And just pass it to the base. I can set up correctly. And you can skip all this. Uh, if you were to add fields, you'd probably follow the same model here. Uh, the get and set, and then I just have them defined here on the uh, constructor. So the language property, so that's set up. What we want to do is then implement the iBase property fields. The fill field method is the only thing that you really have to do and all it's intending to do and in, in you're given access to this base data map which is the you know, the parent with all the settings so that you know you can use it just you don't have to use it but you have it available really what you want to do is from this new item uh, grab the import name the new item field make sure it's not known for you doing anything And then the import row language. Ooh. Culture name. So that's just going to import the the name of the language that that existing item is, and then put it into the field value that you've predetermined for it. And that's really all it is. You know, we're, these properties are just to get Sitecore like properties. So the language is set up. Now we want to do the same for a field. So in this case, uh, new field type, let's do uh, to pig Latin. There's no better way to explain how this works than to just do something ridiculous. So again, we have a base map. You can extend the base mapping class, you, you, you need to. Uh, in this case, because the two text field has the uh, from what fields set up, uh, I'm going to extend this class. Most of them do, the list to grid to date, and the URL to link all extend the two text. 
You know, the only one that doesn't is the two static, and the only reason that this field isn't part of the base mapping class is because of the static field. Uh, the static one is just for me when I'm importing a new page and I'm trying to set it, uh, maybe I have like a new field, a drop down for the CSS class, and I just want to set all the new pages that are importing to this CSS class from a drop, to, you know, for some list that I've created. I just tell it this is the ID of the CSS class you're supposed to have, and everything gets imported with that. And it, but because I didn't needed that, I had to ex extrapolate the from what fields and put it onto this, not at the base mapping level, but here it is anyway. So in this case, we're going to extend the to text. And we're going to implement the I base field. So the to text, it goes and gets the existing name and the delimiter, the two fields that we're showing here. Again, it's, all you need is the constructor. Pass to the base. The base constructor handles it here. Uh, and then the I base field has three methods that you need to implement. The fill field, same thing as properties. The get field, get new field name. Now this is only because at a level where this is generic in the base data map class, I need three values from this. Uh, to process the fields. Not all fields have these values, and in this case it's a static value. You know, you're returning an empty set of strings in, a, in an empty string for the field delimiter. Uh, and you're really only getting the, the new field value. So, you don't have to implement them all. They're useful in certain cases. Uh, fill field is really the only one you need. So in this case, the two texts already handles getting the delimiter and the the existing data names and the new item name, item field actually comes from the base mapping class. So that's already there. We don't really want to change any of that. We really just want to change this fill field method, um, which is a virtual, and we're going to override it. Base data map, I don't really need it, but it's there. Field. So now that we have the field, this method is actually going to be a bit longer. The uh, body of this. So the first thing we want to do is get split this string array up. by space well, don't want any empties and we need something to return so that's going to be that So we want to loop through each one of these strings, which is going to be, in this case, we're going to import author names, so we're going to switch the names to Pig Latin. We want to make sure that this thing actually has a value to switch. Um, the first thing we want to do is get the first letter, which is substring which is 0 for one length and then we want the, uh, the rest substring from 1 to uh, s.length minus 1 
And then we want to let's do append format. and then the letter last F. after we're done we want to set the field value to that so that here we've created we've got this new item we've got a reference to a new item a reference to the existing item and we're altering this existing item value and then we're going to insert it into the new item into the new field that we uh, know about so from there uh, build this and it is not public make sure that Pigline is yeah. succeeded. Jump over to Sitecore, wake it up. And now what we're going to do is create the template items that represent those classes we've created. And then we'll do an import just to show how it works. So we want to create the this is a language property. The only thing we really need to do is set the base template. Make sure we're inheriting from the base mapping. Go out and pick a an icon. From the languages flags, sure. Pick it up any, I think. So is that then what we want to do is create the field, which is the two pig Latin. Goes in fields. This one is also got a base template of oops, base mapping. Um, come to think of it, we're going to want standard values so that we can tell it what class to run. Set up an icon for this. What are the chances that there's a pig? People. Bull. <laughs> and there's a pig. Yeah. So we've got that. We want to set up standard values here too. Put the name when you create it, and then we want to set up the insert options for a field. Modules, mappings, fields. It's pig Latin. Same thing with the properties. We want the not this. Want to add the language. Um, now we're going to need the template for the content we're going to import. And we're, we're actually going to be running a, a Sitecore import. So this is going to be, we're actually going to import the authors that we've already 
imported used find yes, yes. Um, we're gonna bring two pig Latin field in the language field both strings and we have a custom field folder already set up to put this in it's gonna do a sitecore import new authors handlers already set up this we want to pull it's gonna be the get all the authors to where it's going to be this new field custom fields the template is going to be this new authors pull the item name from the name of the author then where you don't care about foldering we do care about is this new field to big latin okay that's all set. Language. Actually, the uh, two pig Latin is inheriting from the wrong base template. We want to set that to the two text things class. Standard values, make sure those are in. Yep. From what fields? I'm going to define that here. Um, we're going to pull it from the name and we're going to turn that into pay Latin. So now that we have the new authors all set up, just need to run over here, refresh. Uh, we want new authors. We hit import. Believe it or not, importing successfully. It's the custom fields. It's Arthur Arthur A. John Williams A. Uh, forgot to put a space, but otherwise, you've been pig Latinized. So that's what's behind setting up a new custom Sycor uh, data importer field and a sequer importer property. It's really just a uh, kind of follow the path already laid out for you by the existing classes. Um, but really it's just implementing this interface in either the iBase field or the iBase property and extending the base mapping class. And then you're all set. All right, uh, good luck and hopefully you enjoy.